I was just making my I was making sure I was out in tune. Yeah. No. Wait, what happened? It puts. Oh, seriously. You can't hang it. Where'd you put it? You just tapped it. Okay. It's kind of a, like. You can make them make a new one or something for you. Like, you know, do like a. Yeah, right. <laughs> O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me said that thou art. Though my best thought by day or by night, waking or sleeping, thy presence my light. Be be thou my true word, I ever with thee, and thou with me, Lord. The love, the love, the child may I be, thou in me dwelling, and I one with thee. True. Hold me with thy powerful hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more, want no more. Feed me till I want no more. Open now the crystal fountain, Whence the healing waters flow, let the fiery cloudy pillar lead me all my journey through. Strong deliverer, strong deliverer, be thou still my strength and shield, strength and shield. Be thou 
still my strength and shield. When I tread the verge of Jordan, bid my anxious fears subside. Death of death and hell's destruction, land me safe on Canaan's side. Songs of praises, songs of praises, I will ever give to thee, give to thee, I will ever give to We sing to you, O God, the rock who gave us birth. Let our rejoicing sing your name in all the earth. To you, O God, let songs be raised in joyful hymns, our feasts of praise. Wandered far from home, hot in a desert land. You shielded with your love a fearful pilgrim band. You kept us safe within your arms and sheltered us against the storm. You bear us through the world, an eagle to her young, who rises on her wings and bears us toward the sun. We ride the vaults of light and air and trust in your unfailing Good morning, church. Good morning. Good to see everybody here this morning. God is on the move this morning, I think, at Burl Mennonite Church. We are looking forward to uh, the message today. We have a panel. We're really looking forward to uh, what God brings this morning. So to start, we're going to start with a song that the tune is familiar. I think, uh, yeah, we'll know it well once we're, we're done. So the words, all the songs will be on, on the screen behind me. If you'd stand uh, to start this morning, we'll sing together. <coughs> Brethren, we have met to worship.
be seated. Good morning. My name is Jeff Hostetler. I'm one of the pastors here at Berlin Mennonite Church. It's good to see you here this morning. We have been doing a summer series about God on the move. It's kind of been a loose series a little bit where we've been exploring how God has been moving. We explored how God has been leading and going before us. We've been talking a little bit about how God has been uh, with us along the journey, how God has been preparing uh, the kingdom for us as well. We've been talking about how God has been our friend Today, we have an opportunity to talk about how God is moving in our community through three different organizations, one of which has yet to be officially kicked off. And so I'm excited to be sharing with us this morning. We're not going to be having a typical sermon and message. We'll be having a little bit of a kind of a talk through session. One of the things I love about this church is that we believe God works through beyond just the message, but as Christians inspired by the Holy Spirit, God speaks during the whole worship service through our singing, through our prayers. And so one of the things I'm excited about is rather than just having the message, letting the mission of each organization and the conversation that we're having today stand on its own at what God is doing as a testimony. If uh, you're a visitor here, welcome. We do have uh, welcome cards as well in front of you, and I invite you to fill that out if you'd like so we know who you are. We'd like to know a little bit about you. And then you can go ahead and drop that off. We no longer do offerings, but there's an offering box in the back in the lobby um, on a table right around the mailboxes there, and so you can drop that off at the end of the service. Right now, there are time for, uh, there's a time for announcements. If someone has an announcement, let's go ahead. I realize since we don't have the microphone anymore, uh, can we just turn on this mic and then... Um, We'll go from there. Inga, do you have an announcement for us? I just want to draw your attention as you came in the doors today. Hopefully you saw some posters. September 10th and 11th, it's the Harvest Festival in Berlin. The rib cook-off is on Saturday. On Friday night, there are fireworks at dusk, and we have learned that our back soccer field is prime viewing for the fireworks. So we decided to take advantage of that and invite the neighbors in for an evening of fun and fellowship. Um, it is low-key, just good old-fashioned fun. Ice cream and popcorn, some games for the kids, maybe some kites being flown, some face painting, um, that kind of good old-fashioned fun. So we invite you to come, bring friends and family. They don't have to be neighbors to come and join us. There are some brochures and invites out on the mailbox table that you can pick up and feel free to share with your, your friends. Uh, people that you might have in mind to invite for that. And then I think on the 25th, we'd also like to gather as a church and more information will be coming on that. And just go and go to some of our neighbors down the street and invite them to come on that evening too. So mark your calendars from 7 to 10, September 10th. Good morning. I just want to tell you, um, say a big, huge thank you to those who came and helped out with the smoothie stand. Um, some of you stayed a little longer than you anticipated, and I really appreciate that. Um, we were able to make 302 smoothies, and um, we raised a little over $1,600. So I thought that was pretty good for the crowd that was there. So thanks again, and I really appreciate it. Any other announcements? I wanted to go ahead and draw your attention to the lobby. There are two tables set up underneath the coat rack, and um, although it was a little chilly this morning, we, we might have needed that coat rack. Um, one has old books from the library that's being uh, removed to make room for some new books. Those are free for the taking. If you look, you see one, grab it, be blessed. The second thing is also kind of a blessing table. We've been starting a table with extra produce. Some of us who are gardeners in the congregation, bless you. That's not me, although I aspire to be someday. Um, they have some extra produce. And so I invite you, if you want some, I think I saw some tomatoes there this morning. You can go ahead and grab some on your way out. 
Um, there was a gentleman who I remember when I first came, Fred Augsburger, loved to grow heirloom tomatoes in this church. And so we're kind of continuing this tradition in a new light. If you're a gardener and you have some extra produce to share, go ahead and put it on the table. If you'd like to grab some, be blessed as well. So take some extra produce. The last announcement I had, I will likely be starting a baptism class this coming fall. So if you have any interest in considering baptism um, and talking about what that means, uh, you can go ahead and just uh, connect with me after the service as well. All right. Well, here at BMC, we are rooted in Jesus, growing in faith, branching out in love, and we do this through the acronym BERLIN. Um, We'll live this out regularly by blessing others, by eating together, by reconciling ourselves to others and to God's creation, to learn from Jesus' life in ministry, to intercede for each other in prayer, and to notice what God is doing through reflection and journaling. These are the practices that we are saying that we will do together as a church body. And so I want to encourage us to keep that up as we continue our discipling. Um, As we think about God at work, let's go ahead and just pause for a second and recognize how maybe we've seen God on the move this week. I invite people to just close their eyes for a second. Maybe it's been through the kind words of a stranger. Maybe it's been through a surprise gift or as simple as a hello. How have you seen God on the move in your life this week? Think about it for just a second. And if you have that idea in your head, or maybe you don't, I think um, these are challenging uh, words sometimes. Maybe we haven't noticed God at work. Um, You can open your eyes and just share that with a neighbor. Take a minute and share that with a neighbor. Uh, Greet, uh, go ahead and welcome the person behind you. You can shake their hand if if you like and uh, say how you've seen God at work this week. So take a minute, stand up. You can go ahead and do that. Hey, Kendrick. All right. You can go ahead and sit back down. Does anyone have one word or two that they heard their neighbors say? They want to share? I I realize that in worship, we, uh, we are taught at a very young age that the most appropriate thing to do is to sit quietly and respectfully. Um, and so we're kind of fighting against that this morning. I recognize that. Does anyone want to share uh, just a brief word or two? Well, thank you for being quiet and respectful this morning <laughs> as you honor God in, uh, in worship. Um, yeah, we had girls that were sick at our house, and so Kelsey and I took some time off, and um, 
just a, just a cold. And so we are grateful that they're all better now and feeling 100%. We did take one to get tested just to confirm it was not COVID. Um, I feel like she's our little canary in the coal mine. She's been sick before, and so she's gotten like this nose swab. It was not good. And so, um, but we're grateful that they don't, that they're all on the mend. So um, will you join me in prayer? God, thank you for meeting us here as we are. God, I pray that this morning, through singing, through conversation and worship, that you would be made known both in our congregation and in our lives. God, move in ways which uh, you would move. We allow you to work in our lives um, through the predictable and through the unexpected. Thank you, Jesus, for who you are and for the ways you are working in the world. Amen. Uh, The singing group can go ahead and... I hope one of the ways that God is on the move here at Berlin this morning is just in our music together, that we can worship and we feel um, yeah, a sense of uh, God's presence here among us as we sing. So the first song we want to do is uh, Holy, Holy, Holy.
Jesus is our next song, and this is a song that we've sung before. Uh, I always think of a uh, voluntary exchange uh, guy, a fellow we had here, who uh, just loved this song. Alexi, uh, when he sang this song, brought energy, and you could feel Jesus moving when he sang it. Those of you who remember Alexi, uh, remember that well. So we need to stand up. Uh, we started with a slower, holy, holy, holy. Now we're going to celebrate uh, Jesus in the room, right? So. We're not only going to sing this with energy and passion like Alexi would want us to, but we're also going to do some motions. So uh, follow Kelsey and I, although it would be tough. Uh, we're going to, we should we show the motions first? Let's go. So we're going to be walking, and you need to move your legs a little bit if you can. We're going to be turning, so you need to turn around your spot. And then we're also going to be searching, and you can search this way. I haven't seen anybody search this way in a long time, but this is how we're going to search. All right? We're going to do it. stories are going to be shared this morning. I think about uh, this song is Waymaker, and we sang this before. The youth brought it back, I think, for us the first time from convention. So look at these first couple rows to sing loud. Um, I think for the stories this morning, I imagine God's work in helping the way, lead the way, it must be a huge part of the story too. So let's sing this together.
You can be seated. Now's the time in the service where we take time to honor what we give back to God. We don't pass the offering plate, but we've kept this as an intentional part of our service to remind ourselves that as creations made in God's image, that we're called to give back through our time and through our talent, through the resources that we're given. And so if you join me in an offertory prayer, let's pray. God, thank you. Thank you for the ways in which you're working in the world through the gifts which we've been given. God, you literally have given us everything. And we take this time to recognize the ways which we give back. God, through using our time to help at church or a neighbor. God, through the gifts which we bring, whether it be sewing a quilt in the wood shop, in the forge, or whether it be through money we give, through the job we work, we pause now to say thank you, Jesus. We give back a portion of what you've given to us. And let that be a simple token of gratitude that what you've given us is enough. Use and multiply our gifts for your kingdom. Amen. Well, uh, if the tech crew could come on up, I'm the tech crew. I'm going to organize the stage here a little bit. And um, uh, we'll move some of these uh, benches on up. We'll get these out of the way. And hey, thank you. Look at that. God on the move indeed. Thanks, guys. That's great. Um, Jesse, I think you're going to be joining us too, right? So I will need like, I'll tell you, I'm going to sit on this cajon. Is that cool? Is that awesome? Uh, Tim, Jesse, Kendra, Narita, come on up. Make yourselves comfortable. Grab a microphone. There's one mic at the end there. There's another mic here. There's one here. Yeah. Here's one here. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. As we've been talking about God on the move, um, I want to talk this morning about God as a helper. And I have the scripture here, Isaiah 41.10. But you know, I I was reading through it again, and really I want to frame it and couch it in this larger narrative. So I'm going to read Isaiah 41.8 through 10. And, And these are words from the prophet Isaiah to the people Israel My subsection in in Isaiah 41 says, the helper of Israel. But I think it's really important. I think it's, it's one thing to say that God blesses us as we work. But the real larger frame is that God calls us and chooses us for God's work. And as we do God's work, God promises to be with us. So it's not that God just blesses and ordains whatever we do, but God calls us. So let me go ahead and read uh, Isaiah 41, 8 through 10. But you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, you descendants of Abraham, my friend, I took you from the ends of the earth, from its farthest corners I called you. I said, you are my servant. I have chosen you and I have not rejected you. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
I am so thrilled to have the four of you here this morning. If you look in your program, there is in an insert an outline here. It talks about uh, Kendra and Tim and Jesse. I think we, we know Jesse as someone who helps lead music on Sunday mornings. Jesse works for the Reckoning International, for those that aren't aware. And then we also have Narita talking about the Zolicon in- Institute. Um, so I want to go ahead. I want this to kind of be conversational. Um, I think sometimes we take things a little too seriously. Like this is not like edited or like scripted. And so like we will let the spirit move. And I realize not all of us are comfortable with, with uh, kind of winging it or telling, telling our story. But um, that's all right. We'll, we'll let it go. I, I want to start off with just some introductions. Um, we'll go down the line. Kendra, tell us, I realize you gave us the bio. Tell us again who you are, what organization you're representing, and like kind of the, the elevator speech of what you do. Good morning. My name is Kendra Kaufman, and um, I am with 5812 Global. And so in a nutshell, locally, we are 5812 Rescue. And we are a faith-based home who uh, primarily reaches out to domestic violence survivors. We also have a home in Thailand, and that home is primarily for children, zero to five. And our work in Haiti um, is still in the beginning stages. Right now, we have five women, 18 to 23. That's for you, Narita. Yeah. So my name is Narita Yoder. I am here with um, Tulikan. University um, Institute, but that's the German pronunciation. We're pronouncing it uh, Zolikan here uh, for the anglicized um, version of it. But we are seeking to bring professional development and accredited courses to our plain community here. And not just the plain community, but um, our community here in Holmes County to uh, yeah, bring thoughtful education to this community. Thank you. Tim and Jesse? Yeah. Uh, I'm Tim Troyer, and um, Jesse and I work together. Uh, We're here representing The Reckoning International. And um, The Reckoning, uh, sometimes people wonder, like, where in the world did that name come from? And uh, it comes from the parable of the talents. And um, in the parable of the talents, uh, this king gives uh, to his servants um, some talents, and then he comes back, and uh, King James says he reckoneth with his servants. And we thought the reckoning would be a little more pronounceable than the reckoneth. <laughs> and um, so the our organization um, does development projects. We see people as um, individuals that God has given gifts to. We we want to help them discover what those gifts are and how they can be used for livelihood. There's a huge portion of the world that um, lives on about a dollar a day. And um, if the love of money is the root of all evil, I think the second one is the lack of money. Um, Just poverty brings a lot of problems. And um, so we're looking, uh, we, we work hard to help people do inventory, kind of look at their lives, say, hey, what, what do I have that it can be used? What's, what's in my hand? And then we, we help them start um, livelihood solutions, sometimes they're small businesses, sometimes they're projects, and um, help them not just to be self-sustaining, which is a great thing, but we see them as our partners, so we feel strongly that you're not fully developed until you're helping other people develop. So that's a little bit about us from my perspective. Um, yeah, my name is Jesse, Jesse Miller. I, I work alongside Tim with The Reckoning. I'm not going to say a whole lot more about The Reckoning, um, except that um, the, the, the really awesome part is the, the last piece that, that Tim mentioned. And he said that we're, 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 we're partnering with people. And there's this phrase that Tim uses that I love. It's a business phrase, but it works too. It's high-performance business partners. We're, we're high-performance business partners with other kingdom members. The world. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. And and even as we're seeing, and maybe you in the audience, like these are all kind of three different organizations that serve different needs in our community and around the world. And um, I think that's wonderful as we think about kingdom work taking different forms. Um, 
I think our community is well versed in kind of traditional business models. You, you're entrepreneurial, you kind of start things. Um, nonprofit work is a little bit different than that. Um, you know, it, I don't know if you've all felt called to work in the nonprofit world since you were really little, or, you know, this is something that's kind of, you know, evolved in your heart as God has, as God has worked with you. But if you could share a little bit, how, how did you end up to where you're currently at? You know, is this something you've done since you've been an adult? You know, what, is that, what does that look like? Um, Kendra, would you mind? Starting? So for me, um, my husband is a pastor in our community. And over the years, uh, we have helped domestic violence situations. And we have stepped in and removed a mom and children. And we've always had to take this mother out of our community to be at a safe place. And God started in 2013, 2014. He really started this restless feeling in us and a group of people from our church and um you know we're known as you know an amish mennonite religious going to church community but we had no place to take these women and so we would drop them off at a shelter you know north of here somewhere sometimes all the way down into columbus and then i drive home to my safe little house in my safe little community and god really really burdened us um and about 11 others that there was something in our community for these women specifically that we could offer. Have I been called to nonprofit? No. Did I ever think I would run a nonprofit? No. Do I have a degree in social work? No. But what I do know is that God gave us this holy, restless burning for something that we weren't available, you know, wasn't available here in our community. And so we stepped out. And like you shared in that verse, you know, what, what we did by stepping out and saying this is what we were going to do, we got a lot of backlash from organizations saying we don't trust pastors, we don't, touch, we don't trust churches, um, and so therefore we're not going to refer, you know, women to you. But in that first year of when we stepped out and said we're going to become a nonprofit, and one of the reasons why we became a nonprofit is because while we felt like, you know, our church was called to do this, it's also a community home because we're answering a community problem. And we're answering something that we see in this community over and over again. I can give you statistics. And, um, and so it, it brought it out from underneath our church to be its own nonprofit so that everyone can benefit from, from this nonprofit. So that's how God called us to nonprofit work. Um, and I think that it's exciting because I love that each one of our churches does things, but I also love when we can do things as a community because we're stronger together, right? And so this home is a community home. It's not just a grace church home. Mm -hmm. And um, in that first year, when we stepped out and said, this is what we're going to do, we became a nonprofit and we were gifted um, a property worth probably a half a million dollars here in Holmes County. Um, we had a couple came and gave us the keys and said, we believe in, in what you're doing, and here's the keys and here's the deed. And, you know, so wow. God blessed wow. after we stepped out. It was super scary to step out. <laughs> we didn't have a bank account. We didn't have a budget. We were like, we feel called to this. Mm -hmm. And in that first year, we were gifted the property that we still continue to use. That's amazing. And if I can just highlight uh, one thing you said, you know, one thing this is a highly religious community like across the nation, but like, so like that's, I think what a lot of people see, I think the shadow side of that is sometimes we are expected to act or behave like everything's normal when it's not. Yeah. Is that, yeah. I mean, that's kind of the shadow side of things, yeah. right? Like if we can be honest about that. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of churches, a lot of people would come to us and say, this isn't needed in our community. Like this is messy. We don't, we don't see a need in our community. So in the last seven years, since 2014, we've hosted 64 women and 90 children from Holmes County and Wayne County. Um, 98% of the women and children who come are Holmes County and Wayne County residents. We'll take anyone, but we primarily are full 99% of the time, if that gives you any idea. In the month of June, we had a waiting list of 22 women from Holmes County wow. alone. And um, 
those are numbers that we don't like to hear because mm -hmm. we see ourselves, you know, as a religious and and a godly community that doesn't have issues, mm -hmm. you know, like let's say the rest of the world, but mm -hmm. we do. And one in four Amish or one in four women who come are Amish from our community, uh, primarily from Wayne County. And um, it's just been amazing um, for me. I'm not originally from here, so for me to, to be in this community and just see that, you know, there are things that are hidden. And sometimes God calls us to push back those doors and say, you know, we're here for you and we want you to come and we want to help you and we want to protect you. Mm -hmm. We're a religious community and we have issues. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Good. And you know, there's there's pushback. You know, one of your questions was a challenge. Yeah. Um, you know, for us personally, it has been. It has come at a cost personally, mm. because there have been people who um, have stature in our community, who have stature in the Amish Church, who hold higher positions, who we have stepped in, and you know, help their their women and their children and. Um, it's it's like pushing back the enemy and it's not an easy job thank you kendra narita you're starting this work can you talk a little bit about how you felt called to do this work is this has this have has what you've done in the past kind of prepared you for what you're doing now well okay so i grew up uh very deeply within the plain tradition, Anabaptist tradition, and as such, going to university is, was kind of like the moon is there, you know people go to the moon, but it's not on your road map anywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so... <laughs> I like that analogy, that's great. And so when I think of just a mile down the road, and it probably just, you know, who knows how close there are young adults sitting um, who university's not on their road map the young adults that i see here this morning on your road map you're probably thinking okay what's my future going to be it will involve most likely some kind of training or school or university setting not true not true for the um those within the, the plain settings. And so it was as a non-traditional adult through a series of events that I found myself on the Ohio State campus walking into the classroom and I felt like I was on the moon. It was very <laughs> foreign. And, but it was there that I heard a Christianity espoused that was very unlike what I had been taught the peace Anabaptist peace Christianity hmm. and I finally eventually found the courage to like hey you know there's another way of thinking about this you know as, mm -hmm. as time went on I would you know mm -hmm. um, put forward these ideas uh, tentatively at first um, but I also determined that if I was going to be there I was not going to write or um, argue a point that I could not uh, um, believe, that I personally didn't believe. Mm -hmm. And the joy to me was finding that in every discipline, in every uh, avenue of study, those ideas, as I brought them into uh, to rest on a historic Anabaptist peace faith, they found coherence. And that surprised me, and it brought such joy. Um, but as I was there, and, and I still see that time as um, a time of apologetics, as, mm -hmm. as well as learning. Um, and then, so really becoming uh, aware of the value of what I had been handed, um, and then also coming back into the community and realizing that our own, my own people, don't know the value. Mm -hmm. Even though um, I knew that somewhat because of my own experience, but understanding that, that my own people don't understand the value and seeing um, out there that most of the world doesn't even know about this kind of Christianity and that it exists. 
and where are we? Why? Why, why don't they know? Like, um, and understanding that there's a need. There's a need for our young adults to become trained and to articulate and communicate our particular Anabaptist peace faith to the world, a world that really is wanting to hear and, and at times dying to know um, this kind of um, heritage that, that we've been handed. And not in an um, elevated or proud way, it's actually very humbling. Um, and so coming back into this community, and then in 2017, I always wanted to bring back what I had um, learned somehow to my people, never thought it, this is the last place I thought I would end up. Um, my home community, it's probably the hardest place <laughs> to do it. Um, the prophet's not always welcome in their hometown, that's, right? That's, that's right, I love that proverb. Um, but in 2017, there were four, four groups of church leaders who came over to the Amish Mennonite Heritage Center where Marcus and I work and independently asked us if we would be willing to offer some courses there. None of them knew that the other one was coming, so we decided just to get everyone around the table, sit down and start talking. And that's really, it, it meshed with what our burden was. Um, and from that, it's been a very stop and start um, journey, but from that's where it, it started in this particular community. That's that's mm -hmm. wonderful. Thank you for sharing that journey and your own kind of um, yeah your journey of education. How that opened doors to what you're doing now. That's exciting, Narita. Tim, you've always been doing this stuff, right? <laughs> it feels like it. Um, so I I grew up in um, Asia. My parents were missionaries there with uh, Wycliffe Bible translators and uh, so I lived in the Philippines and in Nepal and um, Jeff when I was eight years old I was standing in an old part of Kathmandu called Hanamandoka it was a busy like market area and um, Nepal being a Hindu kingdom they uh, worship cows so these you know these cows are roaming around eating um, cabbages from vendors and you know they can't do anything and um, I saw this uh, lady down on her knees and she was like super big draggled like her hair was all you know messed up and she was in rags and she had these two little girls with her one was just wearing a t-shirt um, and just both kind of toddlers and you know their stomachs distended um, from malnutrition and this woman was down on her knees and she was picking corn out of um i gotta think of a way to say it in church um cow poop and it was just like so horrifying she's picking these undigested kernels of corn out and putting them in a tin can to have something to feed her kids who are crying and i, I remember just you know being so horrified because i thought you know as a kid when i'm hungry you know, I go to my mom and I say, Mom, I'm hungry and, you know, she has something to give me. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I thought, well, you know, I, don't, I didn't have anything with me, but I thought kind of the two models in ministry I had seen were proclamation, so like preaching. You know, I could preach the gospel or relief, handing out food, and which both are good things, but I thought... You know, I, I don't speak Nepali well enough to talk to her, and if I tell her, hey, God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life and you can go to heaven, um, what, what does she do right now? And I thought, if I run home and I get some food or something like that, uh, it's a couple miles away. By the time I get back, she probably won't be here. And what will she do tomorrow? And um, so very, very early, I you know, I was thinking about that, like, hey, what are solutions to the kind of back-breaking poverty that that mom and her little kids were in? And how do you, how do you do that? And I love that our message is the kingdom of God, that there's a king and he loves us and that he's given us authority. And I 
believe with all my heart. You know, I've had people tell me, hey, I don't believe in God because if there was God, why does he allow, you know, that kind of suffering in the earth? And I talked to a friend about this recently and I told him, I said, well, you're, you're under a mistaken sort of thought that God is in charge of the earth. And I said, he's, he's not. He's put us in charge and that we're his regents. We're, we're the people that are responsible and that we're supposed to be the solution to the problems around us. Mm -hmm. And um, I said, you know, the people are poor and hungry and we have the means to help them. We just have to think through that carefully and find ways. And so it, that, that's kind of what started me you know, from a very young age thinking, hey, how do you help people in a way? Um, and, and I think the word sustainable is overused, you know, you just mm -hmm. hear it sustainable, sustainable, sustainable. And, and I, I, I like the word durable better. Like I want a durable solution. I want something that works and um, it works for a good long time. Mm -hmm. And so that, that is how, you know, I started the reckoning years later Interestingly enough, going back to Nepal and working with um, the oldest indigenous people group in Nepal who were involved in a slavery system and a whole bunch of other stuff that I talked about one time here at Berlin Mennonite, but um, needed to be a structure very similar to our, I'm sorry, I can't remember her name, our first guest Kendra? who said, Kendra, who said, you know, a nonprofit structure gives a possibility for ownership and participation in s for so many different kinds of people. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's, that's kind of the big why and then how kind of it came about to say, hey, we need, we need a nonprofit structure that can mm -hmm. work. Thank you, Tim. Jesse, I, I'll just uh, play dumb here for a little bit. Like, I follow you on Facebook and I've seen you make really cool knives. Yeah, <laughs> that's your lead in. <laughs> okay, the yeah the the knife making part is is fun. Um, in fact, Tim Tim just shared it really um, the 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 roots and the heart and soul of the reckoning. That that's I I <clears throat> we're of one accord on that for sure. Um, Tim said something to me one time. If you're wondering how I got involved with this guy, right here. Tim, Tim said to me one time, he, um, he said, I think, I think, I think you were, you've always been the reckoning and you just didn't know it yet. <laughs> that's what he said to me. Um, and I think that's actually true of, of, of everyone, all of God's children, all of, um, all of the kingdom of God, we're all the reckoning, all of us. So um, if, if, if we partner together, if we don't ignore one another, if we take into consideration um, the obstacles and hurdles of culture and, and different, different cultural aspects, if we do all the heavy thinking and hard thinking, careful thinking, like Tim said, there are, there are solutions. And uh, God would sure love it if we'd figure it out on our own. You know, um, God loves, loves when, we, when we clamor in help. We, we need help, we need God's help every day, um, um, for sure. Uh, the gospel is central um, to, to our lives and, and to our ministry, but <clears throat> God also gave us a lot of other things. Um, God created this entire universe. God created this planet that's amazing, and it behaves in a certain way, and we're supposed to figure that out. Uh, we're supposed to help each other figure it out and, and help each other prosper um, uh, on, on, on this earth and have a, a kingdom plan as well. Thank you. I think we have time for probably one more question, and then I, I want to ask how we, can, how we can pray for you all as well. Um, can you share a story about a time in your organization or a time in your planning, in your case, Narita, um, on how you felt um, God strengthening you or God kind of coming alongside you in your work? Um, and that could be, I mean, we all know that God works in amazing ways. It can happen through the miraculous. It can happen through the mundane, through, through, through everyday people. Do you, do you have a story about, about um, how you, like a challenge maybe you've had that you felt um, 
or, or maybe you're in the middle of a challenge right now that you want to share about um, with your organization. How, how, are, is God, how has God helped you through it or how are you still working through it? Kendra, do you want to share? Right. And, and maybe instead of uh, each one, if anyone just has a story, because I realize these are hard questions. If any of you has a story, I'll just let you kind of popcorn answer. And Kendra, you like put your face to the microphone, so do you, would you mind going first, and then I'll just let that. Sure. Um, you know, I have stories within our house or within the ministry, but I'll peel it back even a little bit more and be vulnerable. Um, I think, you know, for me, we've been, we're in year seven, and I know you've been doing this a long time, but um, I've, you know, really found myself in just this being weary and burned mm. out. And, yeah. you know, I said there's 22, there was 22 on our waiting list in June. So it's like, how do you tackle this? And something that um, my mom told me actually on the phone, they live in Indiana. She was like, this isn't your problem. It's God's problem. And she said, take it back to God, get on your knees and tell him, this is your problem, you've got to fix it. And she said, and tell him to refresh you and figure out how to do that. She's like, he will be faithful to give you those answers. Mm-hmm. And I've, I thought that, that it, it sounds kind of simple, you know. Um, and when you have a house full of people that you're caring for and you have staff that you're caring for and responsible, it's just not as easy as like taking a week off, you know, and doing that. But... God, this really is God's problem, you know, and he is going to help us figure out how we're going to be durable. I love that. I've used the word sustainable for so long, but it's like, that's not it, because sustainability, how do you get sustainability? And it's like that durability is what we need. We all need that. Every Christian needs that durability. And how do you get that? It's through Christ. Right? Amen. So I'm going on my knees, and I'm asking for durability, and I'm asking God to just keep continuing. Thank you. That's amazing. Narita, you were going to share. All right. Yeah, so uh, the question was, what challenges? Yes. Restate the question. What challenges have you faced in your work so far that, um, you know, I, I read in Isaiah 41.10 that God comes alongside and helps us that maybe you've experienced God's help and, and maybe you're not there yet. Right? Oh yeah. Because when you said that, <laughs> I was like, okay, every day, every <laughs> single day, that is true. And I think, I think of three things when, when I say that I think of number one, I am a woman trying to do this in, in this world. And I look around and it's like, okay, where are the men? And, and yet as I've been doing this, I have found awesome people in this community, mm-hmm. some of whom happen to be men. And so that's, <laughs> li- that's like good. our glad- board is awesome. And, and there's many yes. men on that board. And, and so every day though, there are challenges to translate between the cultures. Um, mm-hmm. So there's that, that translation. There is the difficulty of working and trying to build an emerging nonprofit mm-hmm. at the same time that we are partnering with a local university, Malone University. Um, so not only are we developing something, we're trying to partner at the same time. Mm-hmm. So that has just, uh, that's challenging to do those two things at once. Um, and then I think of also, uh, the other thing I wanted to say is the challenge of in the future as we think ahead and we think how can we build something where the, our Amish neighbor and the conservative Mennonite in the plain Mennonite and the more acculturated Mennonite such as are sitting here, can all of these learn in the same classroom and be respectful of the differences on that spectrum. Can we create something like that and build something that, and I want to say yes, yes, mm-hmm. because we, I did it out there in university, so of mm-hmm. course it's possible. So yeah, but the challenge is to build that, 
that respect and understanding of yes. each other. Thank you. Yeah, and to acknowledge that as women leading these nonprofit organizations in, in Homes County, those challenges will look a little different than if it were a man leading. Yeah, I think that's, that's important to recognize. Uh, thank you for sharing too. Tim. I, I think um, the help part that I've seen over the last little while is just, you know, with COVID and things like that, Jesse and I um, twice were to go to Uganda and um, work with some of uh, our projects there and had to cancel. And it's just like, ah, oh, you know, how in the world are we supposed to get this stuff done? And, you know, thankfully with communication, like uh, even some of the poorest people we know have little cell phones and, you know, are messaging us on Facebook and stuff like that. But I mean, everyone here, you think of your family, you think your business and stuff you went through and you just couldn't get together with people or travel or whatever. And so I, I found, found that we were really casting the Lord in prayer because we had this tough stuff going on. Um, had a situation where someone was trying to steal like all of these trees that we planted and, um, it, and you just feel so powerless. You feel like I'm not there. I can't do anything. Hmm. And um, I said the Lord, uh, just really remind me, um, like in the great verses he read, that, hey, I'm, I'm your helper. I am more real than anything around you. I'm the most relatable person in the universe. And you can call on my name. You can cry out to me, and I will answer you and hear you. And so... It's been good because I tend to be a pretty doing oriented guy. Like, you know, let me help you, you lucky God that, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully he laughs. And, um, uh, you know, just to find myself like waking up early in the morning and just like lay, just face down, like, God, please, please help us, please. Mm -hmm. Please provide for us, you know, nonprofits because we, you know, like our other nonprofit brothers and sisters, you know, you raise all of the funds privately. So you have to ask yeah. people for money and that that's not always easy. And just seeing the hand of the Lord in providing where people uh, in, in just the most interesting ways kind of believe in what you're doing and say, hey, I'd like to be a part of that. And, and so just it's more general, Jeff, but I, I would just say over this last little while, it's been amazing to see that in specific answer to prayer, you know, and I remind myself, um, Jesus said, hey, you have not because you ask not. Mm -hmm. Ask and you receive that your joy may be full. And I remind myself, I go, Tim, there's stuff that happens when you pray that does not happen when you don't pray. Mm -hmm. And just asking and seeing his, his help in whether it's, you know, in something very small and mundane or something big, but it just feels like over the last year, it's been a season of really seeing answers to prayer and being encouraged, my wife, Christine, and I, just encouraged to pray more and say, hey, you know what? Let's ask the Lord specifically for what we need and let's really trust the just shall live by faith. So let's live in that place where we're saying, Lord, by faith, we believe you're working. You're, you're helping us and uh, you, you know how to get your way in a way that's so cool and, and so kind and not bossy, you know. And uh, so I, I think that'd be, be, be my answer. Thank you. I don't like going after Tim. <clears throat> um, no, this, this, this last, um, these last year and a half, um, it, yeah, it's been challenging. It, it, the The challenge that I've that I have faced is not not getting to, to put my like put my hands on anything that that I'm involved with yet. It's like I haven't I haven't been able to do that. Um, and God is God reassures me. Uh, says says to me, I don't actually need you. You know that. You know it's not it's not a meanness thing. It's just like, hey, <laughs> it's it's totally fine. Jesse, just just calm down. Um, maybe maybe write something down. Maybe write um, a note to someone. Maybe call someone. See how they're doing. But Tim 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 said something. Um, uh, it was it was about a year ago. Is a, a phrase that I remember um, a lot because it's such a cool phrase. 
um, when, when God challenges us or when we feel challenged by the circumstances that we face, whatever they are in our world and our family, um, that it's, it is possible that we're being made into tougher disciples. A mm. tougher breed of disciple is yeah. what Tim said to me. He said, perhaps God's looking for a tougher breed of disciple. I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> Can I sh- share one more quick thing? Sure. So I, I like this. Uh, I, I like being at Burl Mennonite and um, particularly to talk a little bit about Jesse, but um, the gift that he is to the reckoning, um, he is because he's you know lived on the mission field, he tends to think of mission work as geography, which I've told him there's nothing magic about a plane ride. You know, it's like what you do <laughs> here that impacts everything we're doing is powerful. And so what Jesse's brought to our team, and I'm a business coach by profession, and I watch him, and he's, he's like a great natural coach. And so Jesse talks with people uh, mostly right now in Africa, in Kenya and Uganda, and he, he helps them think through things that we're trying to do. Like, for instance, we have a grain mill in a place called Nakaseke, and that grain mill is changing the lives of farmers who used to have to travel miles to get their grain milled and were overcharged and ripped off and their grain was stolen. And there's practical things about that, questions that need to be answered, like, hey, how do we do this? There's technology things that team members talk to him about. The person who helped us to recover our trees that were being stolen is a guy who Jesse speaks into his life. And so it, 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 Jesse kind of is this guy who's small in his own eyes, which I guess is better than you know being all big-headed and proud or something like that. But the necessity that we have, um, Jeff mentioned when we started, he said that we're used to an area kind of thinking entrepreneurially, and that is a tremendous gift. And it's mm-hmm. also uh, well-developed sociologists have talked about how that came from, uh, much of that in our community came from our heritage. It came from our forefathers who had this Christocentric view of life and said, hey, we want to, um, in, in, in our worship, we want to understand that being a farmer is just as spiritual as being a priest. It's our vocatio day, And obviously, High Church was not too happy about that, persecuted our forefathers, and here we are. And, and so, but the, the reality is, is that there's this fundamental sense that transformation begins with your thinking. So the Bible says that don't be conformed any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so in other words, what we see with people who are living in serious cycles of poverty, that the, what, what has to happen is that thinking has to change, that there's thoughts and ideas. Your, your beliefs have consequences. There's stuff you can believe that has a consequence in your life. And so our ability to say, hey, let's re-examine some, thinkings, some thinking you have about the soil around you in Africa. Let's re-examine how you think about your children. Let's re-examine how you think about money and what, what happens there. And, and so I felt like this is a great opportunity for me to thank Berlin Mennonite. Thank you for uh, your support of Jesse, um, encouraging, helping him. He, he's doing a great job with us. And I'm looking forward to more of his input into the lives of people. The, the encouragement that it brings when you're a third world entrepreneur, when you've never, like in Uganda, 63% unemployment, if you're 30 or younger, you've never had a job, even a paper route or something like that, and you need someone to talk to who has a great practical sense on how different things work. And Jesse has really been that guy. Awesome. If I can actually snake it back here, so Tim, Jesse, um, in one sentence, how can we pray for you? And then uh, Narita and Kendra. Uh, Constant felt need is the resource, people and resource. So we need people who feel burdened and committed, and we need the resources. We need the funds to be able to uh, take care of them and do ministry. Um, I, I would say just uh, if there was one thing to pray for, just the uh, 
um, cohesiveness of our, our teams. We're so spread out. We need to be one team. Narita, how can we pray for you? Sure. One of the ways that you can pray for us is just don't forget that this is in our community. So in your day-to-day, -day, put 5812 somewhere. It comes from Isaiah 5812, and it talks about being a rebuilder of homes and broken ruins. Mm -hmm. And so put 5812 somewhere where you see it, and when you see it, pray for the home and for the women from our community who are there. I think my biggest prayer would be that God would really raise up um, instructors. Are the course of uh, they're the core of of the learning that any school does and and the teaching. And so, and just that God would provide the the correct and the not correct but instructors that really understand. Uh, the value of, of different cultures mm -hmm. and that can convey that in the classroom. So, yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. There were a lot of really good things shared this morning. Um, just some things that I want to lift out as we reflect on this. So I heard Tim say, you know, God put us on this earth as agents, as God's agents. Like we have agency. And I think sometimes we often feel like it's, it's not up to us, but, but seeing that we have agency to do things. On the, other, on the other hand, I heard that Kendra saying, you know, sometimes when you work in ministry so long, you face burnout. And we also believe that sometimes the other way of thinking is that it's all up to us. And sometimes we need re reminders and renewal to trust that it, this is God's work. This is not our work. This is God's work. And God put that trust back on God that, that um, this is not up to us. I also heard some other things about kind of this, this idea about the value of education, Narita. You talking about education and learning and, and uh, our mind can inform our actions and future decisions. And, I, and then I also heard how, how from, from you, Kendra, and you, Tim, talking about how our actions can renew our minds talking, you know, whether getting in a new situation to allow us to think clearly and recognize um, we have people who want to surround us and support us, or changing someone's social uh, or physical uh, location or situation to empower them to think clearly and, and to realize the agency that they have. Wonderful stuff. Um, I, will you all be available after the service just briefly to talk? Do you need to get going? Or how can we find, how can we connect with you after this? Kendra will be here. Narita? Narita will be? Tim will be briefly. All right. And, but Jesse is here as well. Can I just have a, have a word of prayer and then we'll close this time together? God, just as you sent Joseph to Egypt to help prepare for a time of famine. And God, you summoned Stephen to respond to the needs of the poor, and you inspired Lydia to share her wealth. God, you continue to call people to use their skills and their abilities to further your kingdom in this world today. I thank you for calling Jesse and Tim, for Narita and for Kendra. God, we pray for the work of your church. We pray for those who provide emergency aid who share your gospel of peace, who offer education and training, and who work to strengthen our community and communities around the world. God, for these four and for all who serve, whether staff or volunteers, at home or abroad, um, dispersed or uh, centered here, in public or behind the scenes, I just give you thanks for the ways you're working in these organizations and in other organizations. God, I pray for, um, that you would strengthen and encourage them. Continue to give them the love and compassion they need to do their work well as they work as your hands and feet in our hurting world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.
You're, you, you guys can go. I think we have a song, a final song, and then I want to, um, we'll have a final dedication and blessing. Will you stand with me as we sing Come Thou Found is our final song here. Am I on now? I was muted. Sorry. We're going to have a benediction and blessing. This is Amelia. She wanted to join me up here. She is going to be starting preschool. And so, um, actually, if, if those of you that are headed back to school could just raise your hand, whether you're teaching or whether you're a student, look around. Let's go ahead. I just, uh, let's go ahead and have a prayer. Will you bow your heads with me? God, bless the students for this coming year. Give them minds that are eager to learn more about your world. God, empower the teachers. Give them patience and strength and a willingness to teach. God, help us, whether it be parents or grandparents, uh, neighbors or friends, um, to honor this next school year. Uh, pray for safety for all involved, and um, may this be a time of blessing as we learn, uh, learn more and try more. Help us to be kind and faithful to you. We ask this all in your son Jesus' name. Amen. You are dismissed. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.